Awesome. Hey guys, back to, back to Dirt Live Therapy. This is Jody from Bird Dog Off Road Adventures. Evan from Evan uh, Adventures of Rogers Henderson. <laughs> yeah. hey. We got a guest with us tonight. Unfortunately, uh, our friends at uh, Blanco Bronco and we Weekend Away Points and Popo Patty, they're all busy doing other things this weekend. And uh, we wish them the, the best of luck and the most fun this weekend. We know they're probably enjoying things better than we are right here right now in Chicago with it being all wet and dreary. Uh, I got a guest tonight, guys. Uh, his name's John Carson. Some of you guys may know him. Uh, John, if you want to just kind of introduce yourself real quick, let us know who you are. And uh, uh, yes, yeah, sir. Glad to glad to join you guys. Uh, talked to Evan a couple of times. I followed you, Bird Dog. Um, I'm John Carson. I live in uh, Central Kentucky, just south of Lexington. I run uh, the Central Kentucky Bronco Facebook group and also Ohio, Indiana, or in Kentucky Facebook group. Awesome. So, uh, let me cut some lights on. It looks dark in here. Of course, it doesn't help with the black sweatshirt either. <laughs> I look like I'm sitting in a cave. Yeah, well, none of us are here professionals, so don't worry about it. No, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I may be better uh, looking in the dark. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell people that all the time. So, just real quick while uh, John's doing that, I just want to kind of uh, give a special shout out uh, to Evan and Courtney. Uh, and the rest of the Chicagoland Broncos group today, they had a going away uh, thing for me here in uh, Schaumburg, Illinois. And we had probably what, Evan, about what, 15 cars, 15 Broncos, maybe 20. Yeah. Uh, coming out. I got to step out high, guys, for just a second. So, Evan, if you want to just kind of take it for just a moment. All right. So, uh, how's that ADS system working out for you? Doing good. Um, Loved it. Uh, we actually had a woman's ride yesterday, so my wife was doing the driving, and I actually got to uh, kind of walk around and watch the Bronco, watch the suspension work. Um, a lot of places where uh, the other Broncos were lifting, you know, all four of my tires were still on the ground, so I was very impressed. Now, I, I know we chat on the phone, and I can't remember. Did you say yours have a way where you can set um, your up travel limit on there? Uh, no, I don't have anything on there. Um, I meant to get up with ADS and check on that. Cause I know you and I were talking about that. I've not stuffed hard enough. Like what you were saying you were doing okay. where you were getting into your fender. I, you know, I've stuffed pretty hard. You know, I'm dropped out. I compared a picture of yours and mine and, uh, side by side there and i'm just about dropped out as far as you are but i'm nowhere near touching on my stuff side yeah so when we when we put it on the we did the forklift test um we got it up i mean like six inches higher than what we were able to get it without the four link but the so all the other three tires were still extremely firmly planted on the ground right like they had a lot of room left to keep going before they left the ground but the up travel was my issue. So like uh, somebody on one of the, one of the, I can't remember if it was on my video or on Bronco 60 said that you can get a little bump stop spacer from Icon. So I ordered it and it's here, but I don't know that that's going to do the trick. So it's still sitting in the bag. We've been getting the garage redone to uh, make that into a more, a more YouTube friendly install space. Right. And so I haven't attempted yet, but I'm looking at, and I don't think that's going to do what, the person who recommended it is thinking it's going to do so right might Let be your uh, spare one sorry I said about that real quick. john do you have that same system in yours uh, yeah he and i both are running the same don't well no i don't he evan has gone to that four link i don't have the four link i'm still running my factory uh lowers in the rear uh where evan had gone to the to the four link and that may be what the difference is i mean you're You've got so much up travel. Maybe my my lower rears are keeping me from stuffing all the way up into the fender. Right. Let well, me send you. I'm gonna send you a picture. That I did a collage of me and you side by side. Okay. And you can compare where I'm dropped out and you're dropped out. And I'm not rubbing on the stuff side where you are. Of course, I can't see your stuff side, but I can. I know what mine are. Jody, do you have a way to display it on the screen if I send it? Uh, should be able to. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to do that, but we can try and look around and see if I can figure it out. Yeah, let me figure what I've trying to find what I've done with it. 
But yeah, I've, I still haven't got mine shipped yet. I'm still waiting on mine to get here, the four links. So that's why I was kind of curious. I didn't know if, John, you had the same one he did or not. No, and that, that's how I reached out to Evan. That's how we met because I had questions about it because I had seen his. And then I went back looking at some of my stuff. And it's like, you know, I'm dropped out just about as far as he is. So, Evan, I do have a way to present it at the bottom of the screen. Do you see that on yours? Says present. Uh, maybe. Uh, it may not, since I'm the one that started the. It may only allow me to do it. But if that's the case, you can always just forward it over to me, and I can pop it up there. I just sent it to Evan. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna send it to you, Jody. All right, you're, cool. running, you're running you're on 37s aren't you yes sir yeah so am i now, i know bird dogs on 37s i'm on 38s now oh okay well gotta show us gotta go one one inch bigger <laughs> hey i'm looking at 42s sir the new 42s that are out on the 17s yeah those are nice yeah they are all right here let me see if i can pull this up you should if you put 42s on yours, I will I'll buy them for you. <laughs> I'd guarantee if I did 42s, I'd do, I would be rubbing. Uh yeah. But there's no way. Uh, I don't even, yeah, and there's you know, I'm on the left, and of course Evan's on the right. I don't know if it's the difference in the two door versus four door. So the four door definitely has an advantage already, but that one's not my most dropped. Let me see if I can find one where it's dropped. So mine will go, if you're looking at the picture there, mine, I can get mine completely down below the pinch welds. Right. At the top corner of the tire now. Okay. But and that's, it's got to be the four link. Yeah, it definitely makes a difference. So like mine, I'm able to tuck it up so much that it was actually rubbing on the uh it was rubbing on the the rear bumper which is a whole separate problem the fender flares but it's actually also uh when we were at the badlands last sunday it uh rubbed on the corner sheet metal of the tub I on the rear or the front on the towards the back uh towards the gas fill tube yeah there's and i had to trim all of that plastic Cause when I did stuff, they've got like a big long square piece there that hung down that protected that, uh, I guess where the inner and outer bodies came together in the weld there, that pinch weld area. Yeah. I had to trim all that back. I'm about a half inch higher cause when I was stuff and I could hear it hitting on the tread, but now that I've trimmed it up, it's not touching anything anymore. Let me see if I can send a picture to Jody of the stuff. And then, and John, is yours a Badlands or do you just have like the sway bars disconnected at all? No, that's actually a wild track, and the rear sway bar is still connected. Oh, you have a rear sway bar. I too. Run, I'm running front and rear, and I'm getting that much drop. That's pretty good. What suspension do you have again? Uh, the ADS, the coilovers. Oh, nice. And then so I'm running, the, and, oh, and then I'm running factory. I'm still on factory uh, rear lowers. I've got the zone uppers. It, yeah. Somebody messaged me in one of my uh, things that I was highlighting the Raptor. I saw at the local dealership and they were telling me to get the ADS when I moved to Arizona. And then, uh, of course, I don't know what badge I have the rad flows now and they have extended travel. That's only in the front. All right. Yeah. I was kind of curious because, you know, I'm in a Badlands Sporter. I'm a Sporter like you are. So I'm wondering if the four link if it'll have a total noticeable difference as well. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed good. with it, you know, because I, you know, I came from the factory. The wild track had a little bit different suspension than your guys' Badlands. Yeah. But you know, and everybody's like, well, that's why you buy wild tracks for the suspension. And it's like, yeah, mine's more bells and whistles for the for the wife because this is actually her daily. Oh, nice. So yeah. See, mine and Evans are 2021 models. We don't have a rear sway bar on. Ours. Right. I don't know if it was. Did you guys even have the or the twenty twos have rear sway for you guys? Uh, my wife's twenty two has a rear sway bar. Okay. Did you get that next one, Jody? I see it down in the bottom there. Oh yeah, I see it now. 
Yeah. And you're still running the stock rear bumper too. Yeah. With I, uh, if you notice on the rear bumper, the little makeshift version of a mud flap they attach to it. Yeah, it's not there. Yeah, it got ripped off in in <laughs> uh, Tennessee. Did you go to uh, Windrock? Yeah, Trail 16 took it right off. Okay. <laughs> and my tail light. Nice. Yeah, and that's got to be that four link is letting it go up in there so far. Yeah, so then let's see if I can send a picture from the other side. So like if, I don't know if you can zoom in and see how much of that tire on the other side is still completely on the ground of the rear. Yeah. And then, so that had room to go, but I was expecting the front corner on the other side to be, get ready to lift. And that one was just as planted. That should be a decent view from the other side. Yeah, you got daylight there on that outer tread. Looks like on that front driver, or maybe they're just the floor. Yeah, it's just the floor. That thing, that that one was completely flat to the ground. Okay, but though, you know that's at fifty-five psi or whatever. Right. At the time. Have you talked to, I know Matt Ford is running, he put it on. Have you talked to him yet about his? Has he got the same issue? Uh, I haven't, and I was going to, and I don't, I'm not sure what suspension he's running on his either. He's He just has put this, uh, the same four link you have. I know he has the four link. I don't know what. Uh, oh, shocks, well, well, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. He's got on there. Uh, he and I, I rode with him last fall down in north carolina and he was talking ads so but i don't know if he's ever pulled the trigger on it okay yeah i know so i talked to jeremy from rock crawler um and specifically about this issue and he's like well we uh we our coilovers have a, an up travel limiter that you can adjust yourself so we don't have this issue i'm like yeah of course <laughs> yeah yeah so buy our stuff and we'll fix your issue uh, so i don't know uh i mean I, the other thought i had was setting the back to uh, a set of oris you know the front travel is going to be as limited as ifs will let it be no matter what right correct so, um yeah, you can only go so far and you start pulling axles. Right. So if I were to switch just the rears out to a set of ORIs, I can set my up travel and let the down have as much as it wants. So, I mean, I mean, that's just – those are just the same price really as just getting a set of different rear coilovers as it is. Have you talked to ADS? Are they saying anything about – do they have a way to limit their up travel? I hadn't talked to them just because – um one i know that th there was a crazy wait time on them but like the so the the shop near us that total off-road they they get have a deal with ads i think yes and they have a demo where you can get a good deal on the whole system but you have to get the whole system correct and so i hadn't messed it with any of that yeah you're yeah you're you and i talked the other day because it's austin curran i think is their area manager and that's who I talked to, and he reached out to me wanting to know if I knew anybody for that same package. I think he, they've agreed between your store, my store in Cincinnati, and some others to get ADS that full alpha package or whatever. Yeah. So and there's it's about ten grand for the package, but he offered it quite a bit cheaper. Yeah, I mean it was a smoking deal. It's, yes. I don't know. But my thing is, I'm not seeing, you know, even though they're offering the alpha package, I'm not seeing any of the other parts and pieces that they just released here a couple of months ago out in the public yet. Right. I don't know what's going on. I've tried to reach out and I, just, I can't get anybody. I'm getting crickets to uh, see what's going on, you know, because I'm definitely interested in switching all my stuff out and doing full, full ADS, you know, because I'm sure those big rubber 
the rubber uh, grommets and stuff that are in my rears are limiting some of my rear travel as well. Instead of you know getting a getting a heim there that they have. You you had full metal cloak in the rear, right, Jody? Yeah, my upper and lower in the rear are all metal cloak. Track bar too. No, track bar stock. I just use the Fabtech relocation bracket that just shifts it up. No, I'm running the uh, Rock Jock relocation bracket to shift it up. Still on factory uh, bar. Yeah, I have. I just got the Rock Crawler re relocation bracket that I ordered before the four link kit. And I have the Rock Crawler track bar and I have the, the regular upper control arm still just sitting around. I don't know what I'm going to do with those yet. Yeah, I can see you definitely got it down below there, just doing the forklift thing. I don't know. That's I don't almost I don't know that I'd want to mix and match. You know, have ADS in the front and uh, whatever you were talking about for the rears. You know, I'd rather have a system that works together. Yeah. Well, and I had made that I made that thought to myself, but I don't really do any like uh, like high speed stuff. Now I've seen somebody put ORIs on an IFS. I think it was a I think it was a Tacoma. Um. But getting that to work with the custom lower control arms in the front is uh, might it might have me down for longer than what I would be looking for. Like my main, like I can you can get the ORIs and get them bolted into those rear spaces pretty easily without a lot of downtime. Right, we got, we got a lot of stuff coming up this summer. I don't know how much time I want to miss. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, mine's a daily, so you know my wife drives it. Of course, it's kind of weird being on thirty sevens and coilovers, and that's her daily. But in my weekend warrior, yeah. Yeah, that makes no it better. Mine's a daily too. <laughs> Same. Yeah, one of these days maybe I'll give me a Maverick or something to drive every day. So. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry about that. No, I was just making a joke. So, John, are you coming down to Supercell next week? Uh, yeah, I'll be down there. I'm getting there Thursday. Uh, I'm hooked up with Bartac. I'm one of their oh. brand ambassadors, so I'm going to be with uh, Bartac. I was with them last year at Stampede. was my first time with them, and then uh, good stuff. I mean, my truck's a rolling Bartac magazine, looks like. Nice. Um, but this will be my third year at Supercell, second year with the Bronco. Because the first year we went, of course, they were it was stuck on Ice Mountain. Yeah. So, but yeah, are you guys coming down? Uh, I am. I'll be down there all week. My, my, my family lives in East Tennessee, so I'm going to be going down early and staying with them. And then I'll be leaving back out later, the uh, week after. And I'll okay. move. As soon as I get back from there, I'm moving to Arizona that day, the next day. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. I was actually down in your area not too long ago in the Overland, the Red event. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's in October. Yep. yep. Uh, but they're going to be back country by. It's a really good time. The first time I ever wheeled there. I mean, I've drove through the area many times because I grew up, you know, like I said, East Tennessee. So I had to drive it through there a lot. But lots of good wheeling there. I try to tell Evan, him and Courtney need to get down there soon so they can experience Mountain Springs Road. <laughs> we were on it last night we were, did a night ride and had to back out of it we couldn't i guess from the rain they had uh thursday friday i mean it was bad yeah it was bad when we were there it wasn't raining that day but i was telling evan it's like crab walking it had the fully locked four low and trying to go for it and just sliding to oh yeah kind of to the side yep I was we, had to winch ourselves out. we had to winch ourselves through me and a tacoma and a four runner and we had to winch to one spot, winch to another spot, and then winch to on a third spot just to get it to that one area. And I was just like, Jesus. Yeah, that was definitely uh, fun to say I've done it, but I don't know if I'd do it again, at least not driving. I might ride with, I might ride with Evan if he ever wanted to do it. Nah, it's a handful. We got down to the probably that area that you were in, and they tried to get up that hill. I was running with a, a bunch. I had about 12 Jeeps and three Broncos. Yeah. So we got invited to go on a night ride after we'd done our uh, ladies ride that yesterday morning. 
and uh, it was a cluster. We ended up, uh, me and the two other, the other Broncos sitting on 37s. He and I, Mitch Trail Hunter USA. I don't know if you've ever seen him. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he and I, we got turned around and went back out and got out, and we sat up there and waited on them because the hill you're talking about where you had to winch. They'd gone through, I don't know, with a grader or dozer or something and pushed a bunch of stuff out. And you end up down in a down in the bottom and then you work your way up the hill. And uh, they couldn't get up the hill. Yeah, I seen somebody else's video that was recently and I noticed that they graded some of it. Uh yeah. It wasn't back when we did it, but it was I noticed that too. I could tell where somebody graded at least part of it. Yeah. It's that's my backyard. I mean, that's where I spend a lot of my time. You know, that's where we, we do a bunch of the, the rides with the Bronco groups. You know, we, we all meet up there in Slade and then uh, take off and hit the trails. Yeah. Evan, you and Courtney, if you get a rooftop tent, you need definitely, y'all need to definitely go down to Cali's and spend a weekend and have John be your tour guide. Oh, yeah. That have tent no, should be here any day now. Yeah. yeah. Have no problem doing that. I did that with the uh, Blue Ridge Broncos. They came up and uh, I showed them around the area. Speak of the devils, I'm actually meeting them Sunday. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been talking to them on Instagram. They're, they're, we're going to do a joint run that Sunday. I'm driving down this coming Friday. Like I said, my family lives out of Morristown. I don't know if you know where that's at, over in East yep. Tennessee. Yep. Uh, I'll be staying there with them for a week and a half. So I've been talking to them. We're going to do a, a run together with some of those guys uh, Sunday. So it'll be good and fun. I'm hoping somebody will go to Winrock sometime that week because I really want to go because – once I move to Arizona, I'm probably not going to be driving back to Tennessee. My business, I'm going to be my flight. So I'd right. like to take the Bronco there if possible, but I don't know. I know I know Buttercup's doing a run, but I'm just hoping <laughs> to get somebody somebody else who's been there a little, a little bit more times. But uh, oh, You know you want to run with her. Yeah, you know. But, she's, uh, gonna, she's all right. Yeah, I've met her a couple times. She's been nice to me. I know some people don't like her, but she's always been nice to me. Yeah, um, well, uh, what's his name? Uh, John, Josh Hamilton. I was trying to see if he was going to go back over there. To, uh, I know sometimes they go over there. Sorry for the noise. My puppy's uh, bouncing her toy off the hardwood floor here. Uh, but, yeah, so I, don't, I hope we get to Windrock while I'm down there, but who knows? I was, did, I, did they have uh, – I know they just released the schedule. I was getting ready. I was trying to pull it back up and uh, see if they had a ride going to Windrock. Last I did time, last year. Yeah, last time I checked, they had. And I know Bronco Nation has it really said. I'm going to pull up here real quick and share the screen. Uh, Bronco Nation has some runs, but they haven't said where exactly they're going to go. They're right. Bronco Off Rodeo Trail Guides. And I know that uh, I know that the Bays Mountains on there, which I went to that last year with the Bronco Nation. And uh, let me get this off here real quick. All right, so let's scroll up here real quick. I think this is just a – yeah, I don't think – and that's going to daily drives here. So, yeah, Douglas Dam, Bush Beat, that's all asphalt. Parsons Branch is fun, but you don't have to leave two-wheel drive. No. Yeah, looks like they – ash. Sorry. <laughs> uh, looks like – hey, enough. Uh, looks like they have the base mountain on Thursday, which that's not a bad area. It's not as extensive as Wood, Wind Rock or even Badlands, but you know it's fairly new. Right. So it change. They have a. They, it's it's pretty off camber in a lot of states. I will say that. I will say that much. Uh, let's see here, Friday they go, they're back at base mountain on Friday. It looks like. Yeah, Parsons uh, Parsons Branch on Friday too. Yeah, that's a fun one. I do recommend going that because there's a ton of water crossings and you just like gas it and just have a good old time. But yeah, I don't see anything about Wind Rock on here. I know it's a lot too. Yeah. But maybe Bronco Nation will pull through for us. I reached out to Brock Buster because uh, I just bought some stuff off of him to see if he's going. I think he's having some, uh, he's having to uh, work on his truck a little bit. So he's going to try to get there. Uh, yeah. I talked no, to Tony. Okay. I, he's where was he going? He was planning on being there, but then I looked at over all the attendees, and it wasn't. It didn't pull Tyler up. So 
Yeah, Tom, he, told me he, was gonna be, he just didn't know if he's going to be willing or not because I think he had some, some. He didn't go into detail, but he had some issues I think from his last trip on the truck that he had to address. So hopefully he'll be there. Yeah, I know he curled up his front end there at uh, Sand Hollow on uh, United by Bronco. That's yeah, pretty, pretty nasty. Yeah. He's a good guy. I've talked to him last year. Sit down there. Just, are you going to be at the bar? Is that bar track? How do you pronounce that? Bar tech. B a r t a c t. Are you going to be at their booth? Or are you going to be? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. definitely come by and say hi to you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have the Bronco there and uh, trying to, like I said, trying to get up with because I'm running the RCV uh, axles, you know. So I'm trying to get up with them and. And then also the ADS stuff. So I have RCVs as well. Do you have any issues with yours? Uh, not yet. I put them in back first of the year. Yeah. So I had mine. Uh, at first, they were fine. One of the boots on the driver's side, the boot was leaking oil. And I don't know how, because when you like looked around it, there was nowhere that it looked like it wasn't clamped down. Right. So uh, the shop that here, here in the area that I use, Attitude Performance, they're – they used RCVs for years. RCVs just up the street in Rockford, actually right there next to where uh, Evan's living at. And uh, so they reached out to them and they sent me some new boots and it's been fine since then. But I do notice like a, when I have it four high or four low, I lost this big time down. When I was in Kentucky that it has like sometimes like a popping sound. That's, it's, not, it's not really loud, but it's noticeable. Or at least I notice it. Well, I, I've heard the same. And well, even last night, when we came off of Mountain Springs, I hadn't switched back to two high. So I was running on asphalt on four high and I didn't hear anything. I mean, you know, mine have been quiet. I know they had the issue of the clicking and they pulled, they pulled them a lot. Um, I guess it was the end of last year. They pulled all their, they quit selling them and they reworked them. Yeah, because I got mine just this past October, so it should have been after that, but mine's clicking a little bit. I know that our friend Alex Evan that was with us at Badlands 904, his made some his had some loud clicking noises, but I think he bought them from uh somebody he bought them from somebody he already had them and they, I think they had the early batches. But his was real loud. I mean it was you know, when he was at Badlands with us, you could hear it really loud. His was more of a almost a clunk instead of a click even. It was it was pretty yeah, noticeable. Was, yeah, I don't think many people noticed mine except for me, and I noticed it just barely. Yeah, I think you and I, I think you and I talked about these before I put mine in. I was trying to look back on yeah. conversations through Instagram. Yeah, because Tyler had the same issues on uh, the Brockbuster with his with he the did. grease. Yeah, because I asked him last year at Stampede about the RCV before I got hooked up with them. He said they're, they're good axles. He said I have had trouble with them slinging grease. He yeah. said, but they've got lifetime warranty, so. It's true. Yeah, yeah just don't go above 40 inches on your tires and you're good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I've got, so I don't know, uh, I've got Brockbuster. Actually, I ordered uh, the new FDU, Ford Performance FDU with a 513 gear in it. So I am should be getting that probably any day. He said it shipped out early last week. And then we got the ring and pinion for the rear as well, matching for Ford Performance. So hopefully uh, once I get to Arizona, I'm going to get that stuff put in. I'm hoping maybe with a new FDU, maybe I'll have better luck. Maybe it won't click as bad. Maybe you know, it may be worse, though. Who knows? Yeah, like I said, I've had mine in since the first of the year, and I've not noticed any clicking and, you know, is it is yours clicking only when you're locked in or two wheel or all the time? No, just only when I'm in four wheel drive, either four or low or four high. And it's okay. not like nobody else has noticed it. Like when I'm wheeling with other people and people are spotting me, people haven't said anything, right? Uh, because it's nothing like what our friend Alex had. His was really loud. Mine's just I. It's, it's just enough for me to notice it, and I notice it in the truck, and it's and it's not. I don't know if most people would even notice it riding with me. I just notice it because, you know, it's my truck. I'm paying attention to sure. every every sound it makes. But uh, it's enough to where I didn't – I know the stack of stock axles didn't do it. But, you know, I didn't know if it was a like it's still a widespread thing. Because I know they – like you said, but I know some of those early guys, they were – the way they described it, it was pretty loud. Whereas mine is not, but like you said, in fact, it's a lifetime warranty. If the damn things break, I still got my stock axles. I can always toss them back in if I need to. 
Yep. Uh, got a cameo here. Um, so I'll stop those, swap, swap those back if I need to. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then, and then just send them back and wait for the new ones to come in if I have to. So, yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm going to talk to Ricky, uh, Ricky Berry with RCV. Um, you know, I'm, I'm about like you, I'm, I'm OCD listening to the vehicle when I'm wheeling. I don't even have the radio on, you know, other than the GMRS, just listening for stuff, you know, and I, ne- I did no notice, Evan, I'm sure you did too. When you first took off with the new coilovers, you could hear, you could hear everything moving around all the oh, screens. Yeah. But yeah. now that they've been on there a while, I don't, I don't even hear them anymore. Well, so my new fun one is uh, at some point, I don't, I don't know when I probably, probably at the Badlands, something got flown to the back of the vehicle, but um, the stupid little plastic box that covers the wiper motor for the rear yeah. window yeah. is loose. I broke the screws that hold it together tight on itself. And uh, so now every bump is, I hear that little plastic click, 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 click. And I just want to take the whole damn top off and leave it off. Yeah, I hear you. Mine's not come all the way off. Mine just kind of hangs, and every now and then I got to reach up there and pop it back on. Yeah. So. I mean, it, it's not all the like, so it's just loose enough to where it hit a bump, it like rattles against itself. Right. And then it stops. So when you're cruising down the road, there's nothing there, but you hit a bump and you hear it. And it nice. Drives, drives me nuts. Oh, yeah. So, no. so are you coming? Are you going to come down to Supercell? No, we won't be there for Supercell uh, PTO issues. I got you. We got yep. uh, Badlands Bash in June that we're committed to. That's a three-day event at Badlands. Um, we have uh, Bronco Palooza, which if you can come up for that, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, the- um, so between those two, it's chewing up my last and uh, our daughter's graduation high school graduation is chewing up the last of my pto before it resets in july right so we'll be we'll be we should be down that way for stampede in august okay Um, i'll be inside again with bartek so we should be down there for that but not uh erica says turn the music up louder yeah the music gets cranked in my bronco um yeah so I don't know. It'll be. We haven't done uh, any Bronco things in besides Windrock in Tennessee, so I'm looking forward to something less less arduous than Trail 16 this time. Yeah, you need to run. Uh, come up here and run Daniel Boone backcountry. Uh, I've heard that's a good time. It is good trails. So how? I mean, is it one of those things where like? you just like you have set roads that you go to or is it like well you have your pick and that's what we're doing for the day uh it depends it depends on the level of people that are with me okay because i get a lot that this first time they've off-roaded you know i started off-roading back in the 80s you know i had a 77 bronco and but a lot of the times this is their first first uh you know jump into the off-road community and i have to be careful on where i'm taking them just so they don't get in over their head and yeah. just you know because what you and i do on a trail you know they're when they are we there uh you glitched out for a second no yeah, right. no i don't know what's going on but anyway uh but no, it just depends on who's here. Like when I had the uh, the Blue Ridge Bronco guys up here, I took them to some pretty technical trails because I'd gone down and ran a uh, hurricane with them and then went up to Max Patch back in the fall last year. And so they came up this year, stayed there at Cali's. And uh, I met them there and we went out and hit uh, – we, we ended up running, I think, four trails that day. Okay. And it, it made them work a little bit. So, you know, and like I said, you know, even them and, you know, these are our dailies. So, I mean, you right. you, kinda, you you got you be careful, but you still enjoy yourself. And, you know, I've got mine built to where I don't worry about it anymore. I've got all the Bronk Buster stuff on the front end. I'm, you know, I don't have as full 
the tube, but I've got the passenger side, I've got the bushing, I've got the braces. Right. You know, and then I'm running the RCVs, I'm running the, you know, the ADS, I'm running the 37 Mickeys and, you know, totally, it, you know, the Broncos were capable out of the box. Yeah. But, you know, even more so, and, you know, you, you're doing the same thing. I mean, you're modding and, and getting more capable than what they were. Oh, for sure. And, I mean, the, we're, we're like, so when we, we went to Render Rock, we, uh, we had the two door towed down on a truck with a, the Jeep, one of the Jeeps that was with us. And we drove her four door down and having the trailer confidence mm -hmm. can get you in some trouble. Oh yeah. So I'm definitely more reserved when we have to make the drive home afterwards. <laughs> And make well, sure to be to work when you need to be to work after that. So. Yeah. Well, if you want to run, I mean, I'm not going to put you in anything that'll tear you up. So, I mean, if you want to come down and run it sometime, I mean, there's some good trails. Yeah, I, I think we have it. I mean, we're definitely not opposed to it. It's just. Oh, no. Finding time anymore. Yeah, because you're, are you in Chicago or outskirts of Chicago? Where are uh, you? We're, we're an hour west of Chicago. We're out by Rockford. So we're just just right at the Wisconsin border in oh, the okay. middle of the state. Okay. That'd be a pretty good run for you. But w once we get this tent in, we're, we have a uh, desire to do more of that also. So Kelly's is a good, uh, a good meetup place. That's where a lot of the, like the back to byway that bird dog was talking about overlanding the red. That's all based there out of Kelly's. Oh, Jody said he needs to get in. How do I do that? Yeah, I see. Can you let me in? Hold, please. Uh, I don't know how to do that, Jody. Just a second here. Technical difficulties. Let's see. Mm -hmm. There we go. Hey. <laughs> I thought you I thought you went to let the dogs out. I'm like oh, I was trying to turn my camera off for just a second because I was having to talk to them and I guess I hit something wrong when it kicked me out. So I had to basically reboot everything. You're like, let me in. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, he went outside and he locked himself out. Yeah, you can tell we're not we're not professionals by any stretch of imagination. Imagination there. Yeah. yeah. Heaven kind of blindsided me with this. It's like it's I've only been uh I was on with uh Jeremy with uh, all things outdoors. He's done one of these and then uh somebody else had done one and uh so yeah, this is just something different. So, but I didn't mind. I mean, because I, you know, we got enough in common there. I have no issues with. So, what are we talking about? Oh yeah, trying to get Evan down to uh, Red River Gorge. Yeah, yeah, that's a great place. I told Evan, it's like you know, that's probably one of the more technical places to go for me yeah for us you know it's not it's not a wind rock by any means yeah you know, there, there are some issues there there's a uh, hollerwood you know they've got one called widowmaker and i'm not even going anywhere close to that yeah a friend, a friend of ours has uh he says it lives up to its name he's been down there a couple of times yeah we on our night ride we went we cut through um hollerwood on uh trail eight which wasn't bad and then that's where we ended up on mountain springs and had to back up and punt and get out of there backtrack you know there's some good videos of widowmaker that are out there We're like yeah i'm not going anywhere near that no me neither yeah because it's eating jeeps with 40s and one tons yeah so yeah not it's it's a it's a uh buggy buggy trail there totally yeah Rock bouncer. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, especially if it's a day. If it's a trailer queen, it'd be one thing. Maybe we can get Tyler to go over there. Yeah, he <laughs> could do it. I tried to get him. I know he's bringing 2.0, but I was going to try and see if he's going to bring little sister. I'm trying to get him to run uh, some of the back the byway stuff. 
Yeah. If he oh, take, he take the time to do it, you know. Yeah. He's, I don't think he's a real big fan of mud, but, you know, when he's out in Hurricane and, you know, out there in Moab, I mean, they, they're getting into mud when it rains. I mean, their mud, our mud here is a different class of mud than theirs. Yeah. Yeah, down there, it's nothing but grease. Yeah. Yeah. Is Tyler running stickies on that one now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if he runs on, into some mud. On two, and... Yeah, on 2.0. Okay. Yeah, he yeah. is. He's. Those are those uh, 43 stickies. Yeah, they're pretty mean. Pretty mean looking. Yeah, well, he's still getting wet though. Yeah, he's done really good by me. I was so here's the thing. Either one of y'all run the icon tie rods? I do. So um, no. So okay, I had a set on. Had them about this time last year up for Supercell, uh, and they were great. And then for whatever reason, they went bad on me a couple months ago. And my shop that I use, they looked at them. They said these things aren't any good anymore. They've so they filled a warranty claim for me. Got a new set, new new pair in. Well, now the boots won't stay on. The inner boots keep popping off. So I went to get my oil changed uh, yesterday and at the dealership and they were like uh so you know both sides are popped off now so i've reached back out to the shop they're gonna reach out to icon i'm just to the point now where i'm just like maybe i should either go back to the factory ones with the bronc buster braces because i still have those or should i you know consider one of the other alternatives out there uh, Do you use the clamp the clamp for the icons yeah yeah on the end of your boot well, yeah, I mean, well, they the add to performance is the one that put them on for me, and they did because they had to go back and use the, the clamp to try to get on. He said that he's been having issues with several customers that have them, so I don't know if anybody else had been experiencing something similar to that. Are they using the Are they using the worm clamps, or are they using those Odeker clamps? I, I'm sure I'd have to go back and look. I'm sure it's probably whatever the icon sent with them. Okay, because they're if it's a worm clamp and you tighten that thing down, there's no way those things can pop off the Odeker. Yeah. If you don't get them crimped good, yeah, I can see that. But the others shouldn't come off. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but you know, more to come on that. But yeah, I didn't. I just wanted to see if you guys happen to have one. Uh, see if y'all had any issues. Like I said, they they worked fine for almost the full eight nine months, and then for whatever reason they went back because my steering started getting kind of jerky on a little bit, and then uh, they replaced them under warranty. So. We'll see. I've still got the stock ones with the Bronc Busters. The Bronc Buster things, they seized on there. I can't get those off, uh, you know, as far as the bolts. Hmm. And I don't know if, you know, if it's just because of the salty winter roads up here or what, but they seized. Um, so I, I can't get those off at the moment. I, might, I guess I could probably try to drill them out, but I probably wouldn't do that. But Were you running were, those with the rad flows? What's that? Did you have those on with the rad flows? The icons? the stock ones with the braces uh because they won't fit with my icons well tyler runs red flows on his well but that's he was. i was told that they would because i think i did ask tyler about that because he has red flows on his or at least he did yeah, uh, i think it's the icons and um the fox 2.5s that the Bronc, you have to ha have them reclocked or whatever because they, the Bronc Buster brace won't fit. Yeah, I've heard that too. Because I think that's the reason why I reached out to him because uh, and Tyler he said he says he has them on his and he's never had issues. And I talked to I think uh, Mountain Colt, his name on Instagram, MP and Colt, and uh, he kind of told me the same thing because he had them on his as well. Because I originally ordered a set for Black Friday. That must have been twenty. 2022 i ordered the the bronc buster braces before i ordered the icon ones and then i'm like all right i got these and then i ordered the icons and they're like hey these two don't work together so then i yeah. then icon announced theirs and i ordered theirs and i got one of the first sets of those i know uh i didn't use the clamps i zip tied my boots and they haven't budged a, a centimeter oh, yeah, I've noticed. I know that Fabtech has a pair that aren't too bad as far as price goes. I just don't. I'm not going to pay you know eleven $1 hundred dollars for them. Rock Crawler has a set now too. How much are they? Uh, hold on. Go to our computers. <laughs> yeah. What about RPGs? 
Is that the ones? Uh, let me see here. I don't know if I've seen theirs. I've not had to look for any because I, you know, I was having good luck with those other ones. So, because uh, I'm our, still on, I'm still on factory with the uh, Bronkbuster braces. Yeah, I just took. I went with the icons just because they were on sale through Sticker Fab or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were like they were barely over three hundred dollars. And I was like, well, hell, you know, I'll just go ahead and upgrade. I didn't necessarily have to have them. I just did. It was more of an impulse buy. So the rock crawler ones are four ninety nine. That's about the same price. Uh, they're billet aluminum center links. The ends and clevises are heat treated billet chromoly. The inside clevis is double shear and upsizes the inner connective string. Keeps a small diameter. Rebuildable ends themselves. So I'm looking at RPG. They have the half tie rod kit. I'm assuming that means it uses the, looks like it's the outer. It's yeah, $5. That's, $5. that's like the steer smarts. They're doing the outers. Yeah. Which isn't the inner part, the one that usually breaks? Um, Where it's threaded at? Yes. Yeah, it's the inner. The inner is so breaking. I wonder if it's because it threads in farther, maybe. Is that how um, it's it's still a super it would still be a small diameter piece though going into it? Exactly. Yeah, Rockbuster brace just basically braces it, sandwiches it. So if you threaded a, a thicker material up around it, it would probably keep the stress from keep it from flexing. But you're still the Bronk Buster brace doesn't allow for anything to happen because yeah. it's you know it's clamped. To your inner and your outer, where if you just put a sleeve on it, you still you're still contending with the threads. No, I don't know about like I say, I'm talking about like these outer. Oh, tie rods. Yeah, I mean, do, do they do they go? Uh, are they go? Do they go farther up? I don't put know. Them on the screen. Put uh, on the screen. Yeah, hang on one second. Let me get back so to them because I know that uh, Street Smart they they were a sponsor uh, Overland the Red because I was looking at them briefly. Oh, that's the the four ninety nine kit with the hem and then the sleeve. On oh, the RPG? Yeah. Oh, is, I'm that at, is that what you're looking at? No, this was on the first page when you look at the Bronco. It says 2021 Ford Bronco Billet Half Tie Rod Kit. Uh, that's the same thing I think I'm looking at. So I'm looking at Lethal. Lethal here's got a bunch of stuff. They usually have pretty good deals. Lethal? Yeah. Yeah, they got a good deal on the uh 7.3 Godzilla motor with the matching 10 speed trans. Just if anybody's curious, so John, this is the one I'm looking at on the screen here. Is this the yeah, same one? That, that's yeah. it. That's not one I would even consider just because it's you're right back to square one yeah. of, of wow. threading of threading in the weak link, you know. So you're talking about looking at is the full one that threads in uh yes that one yeah yeah that's yeah, a little if I, if I changed any of them and because ads even ads their new stuff is just like that the first picture you showed there is just the end yeah. and they've they've tried to help the geometry of of the tie rods and they're at the heim going into the steering knuckle. They've extended that bolt. And I know DV8 was running them. They were in partners with ADS at United by Bronco. And I did see DV8 sheared that bolt right there yeah. at the steering yeah. knuckle. Yeah. Do you see the link I sent you, Jody? Uh, hang on one second here. Yeah, I see it now. Let me pull it up here. Yeah, 49. That's the rock crawler version. Which is very similar to the RPG full ones. Yeah. But that's except, $300 cheaper. Yeah, I was about to say, except for the price. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Are you uh, running that, Evan? No, I still have my icon tie rods on. They've been good to me so far. Okay. If I managed to break one of those instead of the steering rack itself, I mean, I would switch to those, but because all right. my black crawler pieces have been awesome so far. 
well, that's me, you know, running the Bronc Buster stuff. You know, it's kind of hard to get away from something that is still doing good. Right. You know, as far as I know, Tyler, even on the 43s, he's still running uh, his braces. Yeah, I think, yeah. Because I've not heard any more failures once he got the uh, the tube there, you know, with Bracken, once they got together and got the uh, the axle tube and then uh, put all that on there, I don't think he, I've heard of anything that's failed on him. You know, he had a broke shop mount anyway before he launched the thing down at United by Bronco. Yeah. Yeah, the guys at Bracken are really good. They had a uh, – if I had issues with that diff tube insulation, it wasn't the follow bracket or Bronc Buster. It was more like the shop that I had put in that I used a different shop for that. And they put the bearing in too far and it kept making the axle pop out. But Austin from Bracken, he was really good. He was like on the phone anytime I was, you know, helping me trying to get the information you need to try to help diagnose what the problem was. They were really good guys. Yeah. yeah I might I this at some point, but I think at this point, if they can't get those uh, boots, then I may just try to, because I'm not sure what they did the last time when they put it back on, but apparently it's popped back off. And Attitude's a really competent shop. They're the ones that did the boot for the RCV axle that, that was loose. And, you know, they've been doing this for years, and they're pretty highly regarded. So I'm pretty sure they know what they're doing on that regard. Um, so I don't know if we'll, if it's, they, they said that they thought that the Icon boot had a faulty design. Uh, and they've, they've shared that information with them. And, you know, that's kind of, uh, you know, I don't know if they're going to try to send them, see if they can send us a different pair or maybe see them if they can send us something different, but we'll see. So guys, I got a surprise for y'all. Uh, I know it's late, but, uh, got Mr. Milton here. Wake up, Milton. <laughs> Live. Wake up, Milton. <laughs> he must not have his volume up. He can't He hear must us. not. Let's watch him see if he picks his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Milton. <laughs> Somebody sent him a text. Yeah. You. There you go. There he is. <laughs> I was getting a lot of feedback here. Oh, okay. Awesome. How's it doing, Mr. Brother? You're going you're coming down to Supercell, aren't you? Can you hear us? Hold on one second. I hear, you now. I hear him. A little technical difficulty. All right. It's it's just lagging really bad. Uh, uh, so yeah, welcome aboard. So you're going to Supercell, correct? That's right. Yep. I'll be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Awesome. Awesome. We'll see you there too then. Um, but yeah, I know I want to check out that tent you got. I just want to see how it looks on the inside in person. If you have it open. He's got a big delay. Yeah, he does. All right. Well, uh, We'll just kind of keep talking here that way we don't have these big moments of awkward silence but yeah so yeah i think the tie rod issue i think i'll probably just wait and see what they say in the worst case scenario we'll just uh you know maybe consider this as a alternative so at least that way we know exactly you know this looks like a pretty good one of the things i have to worry about living up here and i don't know if it's an issue in kentucky john is that you know i always get warned about certain types of joints in the winter weather we have uh, you know, those UCAs I have or those total off-road or total chaos. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I've been warned about those from several people, including a lot of Toyota people that use them as well, about that, that open joint getting seized and having to rebuild them and such. I've not had any issues. Of course, I keep them greased pretty regularly and keep them all pretty regularly. But Arizona, I'm assuming that's not going to be an issue anymore, but who knows? Shouldn't. Yeah. The reason your Bronc Buster braces are seized, you've got stainless steel going into aluminum, and then yeah. you throw a little uh, a little salt in the mix. Yeah, you definitely got them corroded and seized up. 
Yeah. Well, I never took them off for any reason. You know, right. once they put on, I must, I didn't put them on because I had some suspension work being done and I just had the shop do it. So I, and they're really good about using anesthesia because that was my first question. I was like, well, do y'all use anesthesia? And they're like, yeah, we use them on every, use them on everything, especially up here. And I was like, well, I didn't know if that would, you thought that might would help it, but I guess not. Yeah. I've had mine on and off a couple of times just where I've gone to the, I went to a leveling kit, then went to the three inch lift and then went to the, uh, the ADSs. So, you know, of course you got to get alignment after you play with all that. So I've had mine on and off two or three times, but for now, you know, I don't have any reason to take them off. So, you know, I may be in the same boat. Yeah. Milton, you, can you, are you live with us now? Yeah, so it's still a lag. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So, uh, sorry, buddy. I don't know if it'd be kind of hard to talk to you if you're, we're lagging behind. But, guys, it's been an hour. Uh, you guys want to keep on going? We can keep on going. If not, you know, we can cut it short however you all want to do it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, oh, so real quick, Evan, I don't know, John, you may have seen this too. What's your all's thoughts on that new forerunner that they debuted? You're muted, Evan. I haven't seen anything on it besides what you posted on your story the other day. Yeah. Well, in the picture, you can look down. You know, I had a fifth gym before I got the Bronco. You can see those fender wells are a little bit more bulged. Um, optimistic. You know, not that I plan on getting one, but I'm optimistic that those things will be uh, able to fit 35s without as much effort. Because right now, you can't. You know, I had a four runner and I had 34s. And even with the body mount chop and a pinch well mod and a three and a half, three inch lift, I still would bottom out at the sand dunes. So I'm hoping that they are a little bit more generous in their fender wells and like they are with the new Tacomas. Because I've seen people run 35s on those. I've seen a couple people run put 37s on it, but they admittedly say that you won't be able to offer it like that because of the articulation. Um, so, you know, for Toyota, I hope for their sake, for their, their fanboy's sake, that they can get that. Because I think that's the biggest thing holding them back. Right. The, you know, you only do so much with 33s, uh, you know, on certain trails. What uh, about their What about their gearing? What are they coming out with? Because that, you know, when I went 37s, you know, with my 4.7s, I didn't really notice a whole lot of difference. You know, well, that's the gearing is set up for the 33s and they throw 35s on there it's going to mess them up yeah so that's the thing too and my forerunner and i keep in mind the fifth gen i don't know if they'll change that but the, all of them came with 373 rear gears right so mine was off with the 34 inch cam3s on it. it around here in chicago i didn't really notice it that much but you know uh when i would drive home going down 75 down there through your area where yep. the hills I could, it would search a little bit more for gears there, but I could really tell a huge difference when I was in Colorado coming back from URA and coming back from Moab. You could, it was really struggling to get up that mountain, the, the Ike there outside of Denver. No, uh, you got, you got thinner air too. Yeah. So I don't know. I hope so. I mean, they, they're going to have basically a turbo four cylinder. Um, so maybe they're going to have more power for sure. Um, but I don't know what they're, they haven't seen anything obviously about the rear end gearing. But with a new eight speed transmission, maybe that'll allow them to put a little steeper gear in it. Um, we'll see. I mean, I know the 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 TRD pros have historically come with 33s. Um, but I would imagine so that at least the pros would have that, but I don't know. And maybe if they do a trail hunter version like the Tacoma has, they'll probably have 33s on it as well. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't. Now, are you live with us, Milton? Uh now we can't hear you. You're muted. <laughs> Before we bought the Bronco, um, I we test drove a TRD Pro Tacoma, and I can't. It had, so it came with 33s on it. You said, Jody? No, he's out. He's out. Sorry. Yeah, it, it came. The well, the TRD Pro comes with 33s. The non pros so come with 33s. Okay, so it was a TRD Pro that we test drove, and. And he's gone again. <laughs> I'm still listening. <laughs> and uh, that that thing was a dog. So I can't imagine trying to run that thing with 35s on it. Like it had no power at all. 
Well, having that low gearing or that high gearing doesn't help either. So 373 is, you know, that's pretty low, uh, pretty high. We can get away, buddy. You know, I, I know a lot of my friends in the Toyota world, they would all, they would all re-gear, even with just 33, they would all them would get like uh, 450s, 455s or whatever, 457s, like what it was. You know, especially the ones that had 35s. Yeah. But had I kept mine, you know, that's what I ended, ended up doing eventually as well as, you know, putting lower gears in it. And it being IFS, it cost an arm and a leg to do that. Right. Milton's having technical difficulties. Yeah. I was texting back and forth. He said he's got fast internet, but he's lagging bad. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, if we don't get him in this time, we'll definitely have him on again in the future. Oh, yeah. We'll talk to him in a week and a half. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so I'll probably be doing some footage down there. So I'll definitely try to get up with you guys on there while we're there. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know if I'll be doing a live stream because I can't remember, but I don't think the internet connection from the phone is that good down there. At least <laughs> it's not real good. It's kind of like smoke signals. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't think anybody, I think uh, the Nashville group did a live stream. They probably got that satellite kit, whatever it's called. Possible. Yeah. So either that or they're tied in with the uh, tourism center there and they're bouncing off their Wi-Fi. Yeah, maybe that's true. I know Bronco Nation didn't do one last year because I was surprised because there for a while they would typically do them. Right. Um, anyway, uh, guys, you got anything else y'all want to talk about? I'm good. I'm good. Well, Mills, buddy, you listening. You know, sorry you couldn't get your technical issues worked out, but we'll definitely have you back on. Um, John, you doing good? Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's yeah. a short notice, so thank you so much. Yeah, no so, problem. Anytime. I gotta, get, gotta get back here to film, and I got uh, some stuff I gotta film on here, so for the channel, but. Anyway, so hopefully we'll be back here in about two weeks. Maybe not. I'll be in Tennessee still, but I'll, uh, we'll see what happens there. But, you know, we're going to try to do these streams every two weeks. We'll try to have guests on as well, just like we did tonight. Uh, and hopefully our friends, uh, Blanco Bronco and Popo Patty and Weekends and Waypoints will be available to join us next, week, next time as well. So, guys, please hit that subscribe and alert button. Uh, you know, if you hit the alert button, since we don't have a consistently regular schedule, it will let you know when we are going to have a schedule. But also, we usually post something on our individual social media channels. Myself, Evan and Courtney over at Rogers and Henderson, uh, Bronco Bronco, Popo Patty, and, and Weekend Waypoints. So we'll definitely try to send announcements out a couple of days in advance just so you guys know. But if you don't want to make sure you don't miss it, please hit that alert button. And that way it'll let you know when something's coming up. So. Anyway, hope everybody has a good weekend. And if you all come to Supercell, please drive safe. We look forward to seeing you down there. All right. Have a good one, guys. Thanks, guys.